Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Hey, welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a very special guest today that came from San Diego, and then uh, my other guest over here, Rick, came from Parts Unknown, like I think it was Klamuk, uh, Alaska, as a professional wrestler. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, it's an honor to have Jenny Holtzclaw and Rick Newcomb, who's my publisher, and we, Jenny has a story to tell about her brother, who was a bodybuilder and who's in prison, and She's going to tell the story and we're going to chime in and talk about it a little bit so you guys know what's going on, okay? Sounds good. You want to start? Thank you for having us here today. It's my pleasure. Did you bring the money? I sure did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so where does this begin? How did this all come about? Um, back in 2014, uh, Daniel was wrongfully convicted and sentenced to 263 years for crimes he did not commit. Um, it started on June 18, 2014, when he had pulled over around 2 a.m. after his shift, a 57-year-old woman. At the time, Daniel was 27 years old, so uh, this lady was actually the age of my mom at the time. And uh, come to find out, uh, when he had pulled her over, he had questioned her, he searched her vehicle, he searched her as well, uh, he ended up letting her go, um, and then shortly after that, she had reported that same eve that same morning that she was sexually assaulted by Daniel, which So wait, wait, he's in law enforcement. Correct. Okay, he's a police okay. officer for okay. Oklahoma City. Okay. And uh, when she went and reported it, she went to the hospital as well and did a SANE exam, which is if people don't know, that's a rape kit basically that uh, the hospital will do to uh, find any evidence, uh, DNA uh, that might have happened during mm -hmm. the assault. Uh, there was absolutely no DNA found, and uh, whenever they searched um, for fingerprints on the car, they did not find anything. There was a grainy camera shortly uh, where that, that stop had happened, and uh, that uh, the video is really grainy, but everything matches up to what Daniel had said. No sexual assault happened. He literally searched her vehicle, searched her, let her go, and proceeded to head home uh, for the evening. Well. I don't understand something. That should be clear right there. Exactly. But instead, the detectives, the corrupt detectives, went ahead, and even though there was no direct forensic evidence, nothing that substantiated her allegations, the detectives went and sought out more women. And the thing that infuriates me is they only questioned one race in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They did not question any other race besides African American. Mm -hmm. Uh, that supposedly had an MO that Daniel was targeting women with prostitution, drug history, warrants. But every race has drug history warrants. No question about it. And Daniel pulled over every everyone, you know, that was in the wrong. And so why did the detectives and the police department only want to question one specific race? Why did they why did they zero in on him like that? That's that's one thing that um, baffles me is there was no reason for them to continue on with the investigation um, in Daniel's case. Um, uh, Detective Kim Davis, it was her last year before she retired. She just happened to retire right after Daniel's big case. And uh, Rocky Gregory, the other detective, also got promoted to homicides shortly after this case. So for her, for Kim Davis, I believe she wanted to leave the department with a big bang that she found a quote-unquote serial rapist. So, he was in the bodybuilding at that time? Yeah. He was uh, on the streets. He was about 280 pounds, 6'2", mm -hmm. um, big statue guy. What's frustrating is with the first allegation, Janie Liggins claimed that Daniel was a shorter guy between 5'6 to 5'8". Daniel's 6'2". That's a clear difference. And difference. she claimed he had blonde hair. Daniel has brown hair. He's Japanese-American. He had... He has features of a more of a Japanese uh, mm -hmm. background than American, and uh, um, and Daniel got convicted on her allegations alone for 21 years. Well, how could that 
How could that be if they don't have, you know, the proof is in the pudding. If they don't have the proof, how, they, how can they do that? Just like the detective Kim Davis say, uh, stated, it wouldn't have stuck with just one allegation. They went and purposely found more women so it, it would look, there's smoke, there's fire. That yeah. was their intent of the whole case. And so more women stepped forward? Um, they went and sought the women, yes. Yeah. And so um, uh, they ended up with 13 women that went to trial. He got convicted on eight of them. So the other five were found not guilty. Um, but the thing that I want everyone to know about, Daniel received the most number of years, 62 years, for the accuser that said the officer that raped her was a short black male. Hmm. How, how is that justice? It's not justice. Can I jump in? Yes, please. But don't get your feet wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for 20 years, I've worked with a writer named Michelle Malkin, and she's a conservative columnist. And she has a thing on YouTube called Daniel in the Den, which I highly recommend if you're interested in this story, take a look at. Also on YouTube, you see the interrogation of detectives Davis and Gregory <laughs> interrogating Daniel Holtzclaw. And you can see what, how giant he is. He's, he's massive. Um, you were telling me in prison, he just won a prison record for, I don't have my glasses, but what? How 655 much? squat, 435 bench, and then 625 for a deadlift. <laughs> he's Whoa. incredible. He's written me letters from prison saying that, and he's in a kind of witness protection program in prison so because he's a former cop, but saying that it's the bodybuilding and weightlifting that's keeping him alive, that mm -hmm. and, and the friends and people who are fighting for his, for his freedom. But the bodybuilding and weightlifting is keeping him alive, but that's what got him in there. Yeah, in a sense, because if you look at the interrogation, they keep saying, wow, you sure are a big guy. You must be taking a lot of roids. You sure are. And they, yeah. they embarrass him. He's, he's like a devout Christian. He's brought up his first 10 years. He lived in Japan. His mother is Japanese. So he, he answers yes, no, very politely. It respectfully in, in Japanese society. But in Oklahoma, they interpreted that to mean they took a break and they said, oh my God, we're dealing with the sociopath. He's robotic. He's cold. He's not, he's not saying, what? I didn't do that. Because that's what Kim Davis used those words when she went on 2020 and said, you know, his answers convinced them that he was guilty. But here's what you look at. Normally, when a woman is raped, she calls the cops and says, hey, I've been raped. This didn't happen. For all of these accusers, the cops went to them and said, well, you know, there's a really bad cop on the streets. We're getting a lot of complaints. Did anything happen to you? And like there's one I watched. Uh, it's on YouTube. Her name is Carla Rains. And Detective Gregory asked her, um, did he ask you to show your breasts? She says, no. Did he ask you to lift your shirt? No. Did he ask you to, and he keeps going six times. He asked seven her this, times. Seven, seven times. Seven times. Asked her the same question, and she keeps saying, no, how'd you get my name? No, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Then all of a sudden she says, oh, I know what you're talking about. Then you watch 2020, which is a good show, and Juju Chang is a reporter, and she's a good reporter. And she, and, but Carla Raines suddenly looks like a librarian. She's got glasses on, she's got a business suit, and she says, oh, he forced me to expose my breasts. Mm -hmm. And if you just watch that, and then you watch the YouTube interview, which are both available on YouTube, I, I was just shocked mm -hmm. that this has gone so far. That he, he, should, that he definitely needs a new trial. Well, here's the thing that, that I see. Um, when, if you're a bodybuilder and if you're a weightlifter and you go in for something, the first thing they're going to point the finger out is steroids. And they say that's going to make you have roid rage. You're going to do things you wouldn't normally do, and that's not the case usually. I mean, it's maybe in some people, but I don't know. I've never seen it really happen around me, but it does. It does happen. But for the most part, that's that's their hook. They want to they want to place the blame on something. Mm -hmm. So if you work out and you got a big body, that you know, the first thing is people ask me, "Do you take steroids?" Well, they have no knowledge of what that is. They don't know what a steroid is. Yeah. It's not going to change your world and change your life. It's a muscle building drug. So what? So you got big, so what? That's not a crime. Yeah. And Daniel played D1 football. Of course, he was an inside linebacker. He was a big guy, naturally. For he, where? And he was Eastern, passionate, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Michigan. Eastern. And he was so passionate about weightlifting. He didn't go to prom, instead he went, he rather worked out instead of you know participating and going to parties and things like that. <laughs> Sounds like me. He was yeah. so dedicated in, in fitness. I yeah. mean, it, that's his world is, is weightlifting and um, 
and he he took pride in that. That was his temple. His body was his temple, and 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 he enjoys to this day. I mean, that's his outlet, you know, and keep his mind, um, you know. Sharp. Well, it can it can uh, give you peace of mind. Absolutely. It's yeah. it's like a whole out. It's like I said, I, I I was sick and I got back to the gym because I knew the gym was going to help me mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. When you take that away from somebody who's devoted to it like he is, you want to go crazy. Yeah. Because you have no outlet. Uh, absolutely. He, he told me now in prison, before he works out, he's got to move the weights. He's almost got to set up the gym every day before he can even work out. But he's got a whole bunch of other inmates who he's got them on programs. I'm sure they all work making, together. Making progress and doing well. But getting back to, okay, so you've got all these accusers who the police found. Mm -hmm. They didn't come to the police. The police came to them. Except for the first one. She said, um, he pulled me over and forced me to give him oral sex for 10 seconds. I'm like reading this, I think 10 seconds. So she says, his fingerprints will be on top of the car and... Uh, they're saying his DNA will show up in the SANE exam. Yeah. So, they check for fingerprints. No, nope, his story is right, and hers, they can't find any evidence of it. Right. They do the SANE exam. Mm -hmm. No Daniel Holtzclaw DNA, nothing. Mm -hmm. What does Detective Davis do then? Does she say, oh, well, the forensic evidence tells us he's telling the truth and she's not? No. She mm -hmm. says, I believe her. Well, wait a minute. I believe her. Yeah. But the forensic evidence, well, who cares? I believe her. Yeah. That, that is, it was, it, it's just amazing. Yeah, I, I watch forensic files, by the way, in some of these shows where they go through all the research of everything. But you've got to have some sort of a proof that the man was there. You know, mm -hmm. if there's no fingerprints, there's no DNA, then what have you got to work with? Mm -hmm. How can you sentence somebody to that if there's no proof to pull out to show people? Mm -hmm. So that's why then they said, they figured that out and they said, well, let's get a whole bunch of other people. Yeah. And they brought him in. So, like, the second one, um, she's public, schizophrenic. Uh, she said no, they didn't have, then they, after a series of interviews, she went back and forth. The last one, uh, they said, oh, well, her DNA was found on his fly. Mm -hmm. Now, that that's really interesting. He searched her and he searched a male she was with and the day before. And then he took a leak, you know, he unzipped his fly. And when they took his pants, they found touch trace DNA, one billionth of a gram, mm -hmm. nothing. Do you know that with DNA, I used to think, I'm pretty law and order. I usually, I usually think most people are guilty. Um, there, but DNA, I always thought, oh, once they have DNA, the, the person's guilty. Yeah. But uh, let me tell you a story about, I've, I've just read about, it's fascinating. In Northern California, there was this fellow who was a drunk lying on the street. And the paramedics came and picked him up, took him to the hospital where he was drying out. Then they're called to uh, the, a house of a rich developer who had been strangled to death. So they go in, they take the body, put it on the stretcher, take him to the morgue. They test for DNA on this man's uh, uh, body on the dead person and they find the DNA of the fellow who was the drunk in the street so they charge the drunk with murder hmm. and then his lawyer says wait a minute he couldn't possibly have done it because this guy was murdered mm -hmm. when my client was sleeping it off in in the hospital and it turned out that was true what they discovered was the same paramedic touched the drunk touched the cadaver the dead developer mm -hmm. And the DNA got transferred. Oh my God! Yeah. And that's how it happened. So Holtzclaw patted down this woman, patted down the man, went through her pocketbook, then unzipped his fly. So her touch trace DNA got on his fly. That's nothing more than that. No. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet the 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 prosecutor told the jury, we found vaginal fluid on Daniel Holtzclaw. Vaginal cells from the vaginal fluid. Yeah. It, that's what he said. Yeah. It's, there was you, no test done in, in that regards, no and vaginal mm -hmm. testing. You, you can't say that. So then the guy gets 263 years in jail. Now, a month later, I saw, this is all on YouTube, Galen Giger, I think is his mm -hmm. name, the prosecutor, is saying, well, you can't know for sure if it's vaginal fluid. Well, he told the jury it was vaginal fluid. The jurors said, oh, that DNA was really important and are convicting him. Yeah. So just, just that one fact says to me, you need a new trial.
Mm -hmm. What's the chance of getting a new trial? I, I don't know Oklahoma. You know, I don't know. We're still waiting. Uh, any day now, we're supposed to hear he won an evidentiary hearing, which we can bring up the DNA issues that we have found, and then, or possibly a new trial. We're still waiting. Um, since 2014, he was convicted on his birthday, December 10, 2015. So for over three years now, we've been waiting to hear from the court. Yeah. And we haven't heard anything yet. They so take their time, don't they? They sure do. And right around that time, it's really important to know, Mm -hmm. Ferguson, Missouri mm -hmm. had just blown up with, you know, the Michael Brown thing um, mm -hmm. and they had riots. And so in the certain members of uh, what Artists for Justice, it's like a Black Lives Matter uh, chapter, I guess, in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. were threatening to have riots in Oklahoma City. And the mm -hmm. city officials wanted to put a stop to this. So they said, well, let's, I mean, what happened was then Holtzclaw was held up as as the person to convict to show how they oh we care uh, well what's your next step continue fighting to, for daniel um, you're going on shows like this going, talking about exactly. it exactly and how will this help with, you, the, with the viewers to yeah i hope somebody yeah. out there can identify with daniel can help check well, you have various websites yeah right? free daniel holds claw.com justice for daniel justice for daniel holds we have a petition going on change.org which has almost thirty-five thousand signatures wow so we're hoping that we can continue to get the ball going and more people um however they relate to whether it's because you want true justice to be you know served or if you want to continue to um um you know, continue to fight for Daniel. There's several ways that you can. Uh, my Facebook, Jenny Holds Claw, is public, and I always post new information and also um, what's going on with Daniel's case, the very latest. So. Well, a lot of you viewers, you know, most of you are in the bodybuilding and weightlifting, and this is right up your alley. I mean, mm -hmm. it could happen to any one of you, and I think that you should jump on her website and her Facebook and try to make a standard, sign something, or see what you can do to help out because we're all a brotherhood of rate lifters and bodybuilders we're like one big family and this is just like helping one of your brothers and that's how i look at it yeah thank you and I, i'm sure when once he does get out i'm sure he would love to work out with the both of well, you guys well, bring him on bring him on your well, show on here. absolutely he will love that as long as he doesn't make me look too small <laughs> <laughs> well, i think we covered it pretty well yep. yeah yeah um that's an amazing story uh it's like it's tragic it is, and it, happens and it was because he was a bodybuilder they targeted him, mm -hmm. and yeah. then it because he was half Japanese they misunderstood him. Mm -hmm. right? Well, and yeah. then they had the Ferguson thing they wanted to avoid. But the evidence is, doesn't prove anything. Uh, I know. There's nothing. I know. I know. For two hundred and sixty-three years. She, she watched the Michelle Malk and Daniel in the Den mm -hmm. on YouTube. Great documentary. Okay. On the FreeDanielHoldsClaw.com oh. website, I have a link for videos of all the videos that we've been in um, to fight for Daniel. This is awesome. Well, I'll do my part. I hope you guys will do your part. And thank I want to thank you. you for coming all the way up here from San Diego. Yeah, absolutely. Thank but it's, you. it's going to be worth it. Yeah, thank you. And he's going to take us to lunch. I <laughs> am. I am. I promise. Okay. Thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner. And thank we'll you guys. see you next time. Stay tuned for traffic and weather. I always say that, <laughs> but I have no idea what's going on out there. <laughs> bye bye. We'll see you next time. Hope you enjoy the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code Grayson12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Grayson, personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding.
Peace the equalizer, baby. See you next time.